for extremity treatment. If you're going to treat a humerus, the first thing you want to have is the limb itself perpendicular to the radiation beam. So without this headrest, you've got a situation where you've got a lot of slope between the shoulder and the elbow. That causes the radiation to be in significantly different SSDs all the way up and down that treatment field. Thus, you're going to get an uneven treatment throughout this, what is supposed to be a mid-plane treatment. So what you need to do, in a lot of cases, build the elbow up so that the humerus itself is indeed perpendicular to the radiation beam. For simplicity's sake, you can just use a headrest. In this particular patient's case, an F headrest works nicely. It makes the humerus exactly where you want it to be. Now, if you've been kind to your patient or they're in pain and you've given them a table pad, make sure that the headrest itself is completely on or completely off of the table pad. What you don't want is this headrest partially on and partially off of the table pad because every time you try to adjust the patient, the, ta the table pad is going to cause this to sit in a different location and it's going to be wobbly. You don't want wobbly, you want reproducible and stable. So make sure that it's completely on or completely off the table pad. Either use an extension like we have here or have the table pad completely over to the side so that you have access to the table itself and thus you've got a nice stable setup. So let's go ahead and set one of these up. You're normally going to have collimator and angle following the angle that the limb is set in simulation. So initially what you're going to do is get yourself on to the central ray, in out left right. Now you can see that both superior and inferior were not actually touching. There's two ways that you can handle this. You can do it the easy way, which is just rotate the collimator, but that's not always available to you. If you have a record and verify system that causes you to have to override everything, you don't want to have to be answering questions to your physicist, and that answer would be, I was too lazy to actually set my patient up, so I rotated the collimator. What you want to do is then move this limb all as one unit. You can see that we've got, a, got the patient grasping the ring. What I usually do is grasp the elbow and the ring at the same time to make your patient movement. That moves the entire limb all at once. Instead of just kind of tugging here, they're going to try to help you. If you have kind of, kind of control their hand and their elbow at the same time, they're more likely to cooperate with you. Number two, look and see if the shoulder is relaxed. Here, like flex your shoulder up. A lot of times the patient will do that as soon as you touch them. And then, once you stop looking at them, their shoulder will then relax. Make sure that their shoulder is relaxed. Sometimes these people are in pain. They're going to have a harder time relaxing because of that too, especially if the cancer that you're treating is a lot further up. These people normally have bone mets. You've got to be really careful anytime you make any movement. This bone could be ready to break. Don't be just thrashing them about. Be very gentle with your movements. Now. What I generally expect people to do, you want to get all of your marks on the same side of this line, on the same side of the CR, okay? If, let's say for instance, we started off like this, we're this far off, I'm going to go back to our starting point, we're not quite touching here and we're not quite touching here. If we just move the bottom part of this arm until it, it's kind of on, and then you move back to the CR, you're going to be chasing your own tail. You want to get all of these marks on the same side of the line of the CR, the same side of the fence, so to speak. Everyone needs to be on the same side of the fence. So move everything. Overcorrect yourself. Move more than you expect that you need to move. So now all of our marks are all on the same side of this line. You can then move yourself. The driver goes back to the CR. And look, we're pretty darn close. Now we just make a small adjustment. We're kind of all on the same side of the fence again. Actually, we're on. So now you've got a three-point in-line setup. Instead of having a three-point setup where there's marks on each side of the body that you line all of your lasers up to, we still have a three-point setup. It just goes in a line. This allows us to be in line all the way along the course of his humerus. Then you can set your depth. 
basically your SSD. Now we're about ready to treat. One thing that you do want to do, you, you probably noticed, let me turn the light back off, that the field itself is not as wide as the entire limb. You want to have it as tight as possible, and a lot of times they'll, be, they'll actually be blocking involved as well. You want to be as tight as possible so that you preserve the lymphatic drainage up and down this limb. If you treat the entire width for a course of treatment, everything from that area down is going to get lymphedema. You will not have full circulation back and forth of the lymph system, and then his, the rest of his arm and his hand is going to swell up two or three times the size that it normally is. That's not a good situation, and it's very difficult on a patient to recover from because you're going to treat through and through. So you want to have it as narrow as possible so that you leave channels for the lymphatic drainage to go where it needs to go.